Hey friends, Jill here. Welcome back to the farm. I just got done picking up kiddos from school and now my sweet little Charlie Brooke is in the kitchen with me making sourdough. Um, I'm actually about to go outside and harvest some things. Um, but this was such a sweet moment and she was so happy that she got to make sourdough with me um, that she wanted me to share with all you guys how great she was at cooking and baking. So I'm gonna film her uh, here in the kitchen making some bread for us. You're back? I'm back. All right, so give me just a second and mom will show you. Um, yeah, so what you're gonna do is just take your hands and mix it all together really good. Your hands are clean, right? Yes. <laughs> Ew. So mushy and gooey. Sounds so gross. Good job. Good to me. You're doing good. So look, there's still a little bit more flour. So you're doing good. Just keep like taking it from the bottom and flipping it to the top, okay? Okay. Yep, just like that. So we got to get all that flour good and incorporated, okay? Good morning, everyone. It is the next morning. I have let my sourdough sit all night. Now I'm going to shape it, uh, stick it in my bandages, and then pop it in the fridge for its final proofing before um, I make it for dinner tonight. But I'm actually gonna talk to you guys about something because I'm gonna be in the kitchen today. Um, a lot of you guys have asked for cooking content. Um, and we just haven't done it for whatever reason. So today I'm actually going to be playing around trying to create a butternut uh, squash soup recipe. So we are doing something with some friends of ours the beginning of November and it's like this really beautiful setting at a friend's place and I got, it's kind of like this farm to table dinner but just with like close friends and so I'm gonna be taking care of the charcuterie board. So I've been making lots of fermented things and kind of thinking through what's gonna pair really well together. I'm gonna be making a bone marrow butter, which I'm real excited about. Um, and then I'm gonna be making a soup. And so I'm trying to figure out today and probably won't happen today, but this week I'm wanting to kind of nail down what I want in this soup. Uh, truthfully, I've never made butternut squash soup. However, I'm growing a lot of butternut squash on my farm. I'm doing these small little South Anna ones, which are more personal size. I'm doing really um, like the big ones that are gonna get a, quite a bit bigger. And so I've got lots of different varieties. I've got some honey nuts. Um, and so I'm just gonna play around with flavors today. And so let's get this sourdough shaped um, and in the fridge while we play around in the kitchen. Well, I've got my bannetons. I've got my rice flour which I just use the Bob's Red Mill. Um, I just like to coat my bannetons in this. Um, it just, it makes it to where the dough doesn't actually stick. So you'll see, I'm just kind of moving my bannetin in this circle and coating it really well. If you don't have brown rice flour, you don't have to use that. You can use just a, a normal flour. Um, I just find that I like this, I can usually find it on sale and I just stock up on it. 
um, last night with Charlie. And then I did my rounds of lifts and folds, but then I left it on the counter overnight. And then I'm gonna get up this morning and I'm shaping it like what I'm doing with you guys. But then I'm popping it in the fridge for the final proofing. And this can stay in there for as little as three hours or I've left it in the fridge for up to 24 hours. And really the longer that you leave it, the more it's really strengthening that flavor of sourdough. Um, and I actually really prefer that. But it's great because if you, the night before, do all your lifts and folds, you leave it on the counter and you have to get up and go to work the next day, you can easily just do what I'm about to do pop it in the fridge all day, come back home from work and be baking it. So I know for me, that was one of my bigger struggles when I was getting started with sourdough is trying to figure out how it works with my schedule. And so I found that this was really conducive to that and just helped a lot. Um, so if you want this recipe, it is in the free daily loaf ebook. Um, I'll put the link down below, but if you want a step-by-step walkthrough, like we've got sourdough starter on our website and we have a course where we just like walk through all the things. So if this is a bit overwhelming and you want to deep dive a bit more, look into one of those resources. Um, if you can see my sourdough has grown quite a bit, which is nice. Let's start shaping. All right, so there we have it. So what I'm gonna do is just wet my towels, pop them back over the bathing tin, and throw them in the fridge. All right, so I've got my oven preheating to 375 degrees. I've got just your standard butternut that I'm gonna use. But then I'm gonna also add one of these uh, honey nuts. This was the honey nut um, from Row 7 Seeds. Um, my friend was actually passing through Tennessee, stopped at this little farm stand and found these and so grabbed me a couple, which I was real excited about. So I'm gonna do the two of these and mix. But then I think I'm also going to try to do a different take on this. So I'm going to uh, roast some carrots. I also think I'm going to roast a sweet potato and try to add some of that creaminess in. So I'm just thinking through, this is going to be an outdoor event. We're going to have open fire. Like I want people to taste this soup and taste all these different elements of fall. So when you actually roast your vegetables before you put them in a soup, um, it enhances the flavors. It just adds way more depth. And so I've done this with any soup I've made, even though I haven't made this particular soup. So I'm most definitely going to roast this. So I'm going to roast this one, roast this one. I'm just going to cut it in half too. So I'm going to get all my ingredients out. Um, I'm still trying to play around with what I want to season these with. Um, so right now I'm thinking nutmeg, those fall flavors. Um, I thought about saffron and I think I might still play around with a different version of this as well that has that in there. Um, but I'm thinking some coconut sugar and some nutmeg, a little bit of salt and pepper. Um, this might actually taste really good.
All right, so here is what I plan on experimenting with. I have got Tuscan herb oil because I think herbs would taste really well, but I don't really have any fresh herbs. So I thought, well, I'll use the Tuscan herb oil to kind of give it that little bit of flavor. Um, I'm using coconut sugar, which is gonna act like a brown sugar, hopefully. So we'll see if this um, healthy alternative actually works. <laughs> I'm gonna do nutmeg. I think that if you had access to um, fresh nutmeg where you could ground it down, that would taste a lot better, but I couldn't find that. Then I'm gonna drizzle it with some honey and then add some salt and pepper. So we'll see <laughs> how this turns out. All right, last but not least, I'm going to crack some fresh pepper over this. I'm smelling a lot of the nutmeg and I know I was heavy handed on it, but my thought is when I get ready to blend this, so I'm actually gonna make this soup um, just by blending it, I'm gonna add some um, like raw cream. And so I know that that's gonna kind of dilute the flavors a little bit. So I am wanting to add a bit more flavors while it's being cooked in here in hopes that it preserves some of it um, when I add some of the other ingredients that I plan on adding. Just a little bit of salt. And then I'm gonna have to really keep an eye on this because if I was just doing my bigger butternut, then probably 45 minutes to an hour would be ready, but I've got these small sweet potatoes and these small little honey nuts. So I know that I'm probably gonna start checking at 25 minutes. I'll probably have to pull uh, the sweet potatoes and the small honey nuts and then leave this bigger butternut squash on there. But my oven's preheated to 375 degrees. I'm gonna set a timer and pop it in. All right, guys, I have pulled the squash out of the oven. It smells divine. Um, and so essentially what I'm doing, I've got this little like chef's journal book <laughs> and it's for just all your recipes. And I just have this like really cool idea of writing down every recipe I've ever come up with and pass this down to my kiddos. And so I wish I had a recipe, which I really don't. And so I'm just kind of jotting it all down in here which I do encourage you guys to do. Um, and there's, you know, areas in here where you can kind of put like replacement ingredients, um, dish inspirations, possible improvements. So I really like that because it allows me to put the original recipe and then go in and kind of tweak it a little bit. Um, and so I've just got this out so that I can put down all the things that I'm gonna be doing. And so I've got my Ninja here. And essentially what I'm gonna be doing is just scraping out the insides of the squash dumping it in here and then pureeing it. Um, 
my goal for this is that it's something I can make ahead of time and either freeze and pull out and I'm really wanting it to keep its flavor but then I can put it on the stove top so I think I'm gonna try to blend it and then I'm gonna move it to the stove throw some more spices in there some you know cream um, and then just let it kind of sit on low for most of the day it's kind of my thought process so Let's see, let's start scooping and <laughs> dumping it in and fingers crossed it turns out decent. So it smells exceptional. Now when I add it into the stock pot, I'm gonna add like a, a broth to it, some other seasonings. Let's see. Whoa, it's really good. Really good. You can taste the nutmeg, but it's super subtle. I actually even feel like it needs a little bit of salt to cut through the sweetness a bit more, but I think a cinnamon actually sounds really delightful. All right, so I got the cast iron on over here. I'm just gonna saute some fermented garlic paste and some onions in here, because I do know that Nathan's not gonna want a soup without some onions, and I do think that's gonna help with the flavor a little bit. So I've got some bacon grease that's in here. Um, again, <laughs> you can use ghee, you could use real butter. That's just what I already had in the cast iron. Um, from the previous thing that I cooked. So I'm just melting this. I'm probably gonna chop up a large um, onion and probably three tablespoons of uh, garlic, I think. So I sauteed my onions and garlic, threw it back in. I'm actually gonna use a uh, chicken broth because it's what I have. You can use a vegetable broth um, or maybe even a beef broth. If, like I would just use whatever you have on hand, but I knew that this was gonna be, this with the cream is what's gonna kind of um, expand it a little bit. So I'm gonna see if I have two cups here, pour that in and I might do like a cup of fresh cream and then a cup of like coconut cream blend it up and we'll see all right so this definitely gave it a more soup like consistency pretty runny actually um but i think it'll be good so let's taste it so you can definitely taste the garlic in my opinion it still needs salt so i'm going to put this back um, on the stove. I don't actually know that I'm going to add cream. I think I might save that and garnish with it um, because I personally really like the consistency that's here. If, it, if I added too much more liquid, I think it might be too liquidy. Um, even though when you think of a soup, you think of runny, I want this to kind of be a thicker type soup. So the flavor's there for sure. I still think I might add a little bit of turmeric maybe a little bit of curry powder for, I'm looking for a bit of a punch. Not quite feeling that punch, but look how stunning <laughs> this color is. So let's move it back to the stove. Let's add some stuff in there. I'm just gonna keep it on low pretty much all day and let those flavors just marinate really, really well. All 
All right, you guys, it is approaching dinner time. And while it was really hot this morning when I got up and decided to be adventurous with this butternut um, soup, now it is just raining and gloomy and the perfect night to have some good sourdough and some rich soup. So it ended up being a good call, but I've got my butternut soup on the stove on low. I'm still just letting all those flavors marinate. Um, it's tasting exceptional, but now I just pulled my sourdough from, um, the fridge and I'm gonna score it. This is one of my favorite things about the daily loaf. So I bake focaccia all the time and you get to decorate it with this bread art. And a lot of times it's veggies and edible flowers I have growing on the farm. But with the daily loaf, uh, you do it a bit different. You actually score it, which allows it to bloom, which is really fun, but it's a really cool way to get creative. And so I'm gonna do some fun designs on here and thought I'd just share this process with you as well. enlisted Nathan to cut the bread for me he's been taste testing a little bit but I wanted to talk to you about this real quick before we dive into dinner um, so for me you'll notice my loaf is really golden brown and that's just based off of preference so Nathan prefers our sourdough a little underdone if you will and so one you know sourdough is good when you completely just squeeze it down and it bounces back up you see that spring that's actually really good but he likes the inside a little bit gooey, a little bit softer. And so I know that I need to have that outside, this like nice golden color, not really burnt. If you look at the bottom though, the bottom's done. You knock on it, it's hollow. That's a good sign for sourdough. Um, but you can totally make this darker. You can have the inside not as gooey. It's totally just personal preference. So I left mine in the cast iron Dutch oven like 35 minutes covered and 20 minutes uncovered, you can let it go well over an hour. Um, you really don't wanna be checking your sourdough often. You don't wanna be taking that lid out and removing it, but it will require you to do that a few times for you to get used to you know, that whatever color you want. And now I just know, oh, okay, when it's reached this golden, I kind of can gauge what the inside tastes like, but it tastes good. It tastes amazing. Tastes really good with some butter. We've been taste testing before dinner. <laughs> Don't bite my finger. Oh I my. thought you were giving me the whole bite. No, you have to share. <laughs> I did make two loaves, but you still have to share. But look, you guys, that is a good loaf of bread. So I just toasted some almonds and some pumpkin seeds. We're going to garnish that on top with some whipped cream cheese and a sprig of thyme. And I do think all those flavors are gonna 
be really well. Sounds really and good. And then you've got the salted butter with this, with the finishing salt. Because right now the soup's a little sweet. Um, obviously, I mean, I put coconut sugar and honey on it. Like, it's got sweeter notes. But I think with the creaminess of the whipped cream, um, cream cheese, and then the finishing salt on here is so much saltier. I mean, I think it's going to be a good combination. I think it's going to be great. I can't wait. I'm actually really excited about this. And if it actually turns out and the people eat it, then my goodness, I'm going to be in the kitchen all the time. <laughs> Are we ready to try mom's creation? Yes. Let's see. I'm dying to try it. Is it applesauce? <laughs> it's butternut squash soup, June. Mm, that's good. That's yummy. So the crunchiness of Ew. the toasted pumpkin seeds and almonds is delightful. What do you think, babe? My mouthful. This is really good. I do think I'm going to take some finishing salt and sprinkle on here. Sprinkle on here. But that's a wrap, you guys. My first recipe creation is edible, and it feels so good. <laughs> it's but, amazing, let me tell you. Yeah, so thank you guys for hanging out with me in the kitchen. If you want to know how to make sourdough in depth, I have a, a mini course. I actually have my sourdough going off right now in the oven, but I'll put the link to everything down below for the starter or for the course. But ultimately, I just encourage you guys, get in your kitchen and create. You have no idea if you're capable of doing something until you do it. This was a love I had from childhood that I'm finally nurturing and cultivating a space for, and it feels really good. But thank you guys for hanging out with me in my kitchen today. I'll talk to you soon.